Join From Beer to the Bible every week as Irvin Lee and co-host Sarah Oliveira McDonald warn others of the consequences of drug and alcohol addiction by being the voice of faith-based recovery. Every week, Irvin and Sarah help people get access to the treatment and counseling they so desperately need. They explore the depths of addiction and give practical life examples of how to recover and develop a new rhythm of living. The show is gritty, authentic, and simply raw while being rooted in the love, faith, and hope of God. Welcome to From Beer to the Bible. Hi, and welcome to From Beer to the Bible. I'm your host, Sarah McDonald. We have our special friend of the show and co-host today, Anika Cooper. Say hi, Anika. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me again. Before we get started, please like, share, and subscribe at FromBeerToTheBible.com. We come to you with a, a very special guest today. We have Julie Ryan, founder and president of Catalyst Ministries. Hi, Julie. Hi there. Thank you for being on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a joy to be here. We're going to be talking today <clears throat> about freedom from bondage. And as always, we're going to come to you in God's word, and Anika is going to come in scripture. We are going to read John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yes, yes, yes. So, Julie, tell us a little bit about you and Catalyst Ministries and how it all got started. Yeah, you know, um, this is a, a God story for sure for, for me. And um, uh, the Lord really gave me a heart for women, even as a, as a young woman. And uh, so I was involved with ministry to women in various ways, kind of more in the local church and that kind of thing, and just really loved seeing people mobilized towards his work and helping lead that. And um, I had a heart for women at risk. So we began to reach out to single moms and kind of gather the local church around them in various ways. and did something that we called Single Moms Morning Out that was kind of a Mother's Day gift for single moms that included everything you could imagine, car wash, childcare, spa services, just everything. And, um, and I just, um, as I walked in that, uh, the Lord also began to give me a heart for um, the area of human trafficking. And as I learned more about that, that was something that um, I would say I was just uh, you know, I think that sometimes you have things in your life where it's kind of um, something that you just are changed once you know about it and yeah. you, you have to do something about it. And that's how it was for me with that issue. So um, that was kind of the beginning for me of just praying into that, learning more and doing that within that realm of the local church. And then God kind of led me from there. Um, to take some other big steps. Awesome. Awesome. So um, a little bit more about human trafficking. Can you tell us a little bit more about Catalyst Ministries and how you come together and help tra human trafficking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are, um, I'd say model is that we work with women through a restorative home model. So we, um, we have a safe home that's available for women to stay at um, for a long term, so they can stay up to two years at no cost. And in that situation, they have what we call wraparound services, just you know everything that we um, know that the women are going to need in order to just receive support and walk towards healing. And uh, so we've been able to establish a safe home in um, Illinois, which is where I, I'm originally from. And then now our second location um, is going to be opening later this year. We're thrilled about that. Um, and that's called Catalyst Ranch. And that will be a second restorative home for women. That's amazing. So, um, through this process, how has, have you defined God's love and um, the freedom that it brings in your specific ministry? You know, you know that, is, that is the whole um, heart of Catalyst. And really, we we named the ministry that because we believe that, you know, Jesus is actually the catalyst. Yeah. 
So he's the change agent. And knowing that um, for these these women, the trauma that they've experienced, the things that they've gone through that are horrific, um, you know, really no person is going to be able to do the healing that needs to happen from the inside out yeah. for them. Um, we can walk alongside of them and support them, but really it's Jesus that's the healer. And so we believe that, you know, every woman is um, precious to him. Every woman has great worth. And uh, so we try to show that um, to the women that we work with in everything we do. What does the outreach look like? Like, how do they get to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a couple different ways. Um, and some of this is kind of developed over time. We're in our eighth year now. Awesome. And so we work with local partners. Um, so word of mouth, sometimes um, a survivor will find us on our website, that kind of thing. Um, we have, are part of a national network of um, sheltered care. And so we um, receive emails through that of women who are looking for this kind of care. And so uh, local law enforcement, those kinds of things. So, so we partner around the country awesome. and um, make sure that what we're able to offer is the best fit for that woman who's seeking help. And what's the youngest? So we work with adult survivors, so okay. 18 and up. Okay. Awesome. Why are you so passionate about Catalyst Ministries? Wow, that's a great question. Loaded, <laughs> loaded question, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think, um, you know, I think seeing in my own life how the Lord has transformed me and how he has worked in my life and shown me such grace and such mercy and such love in every single day. And um, I've been walking with the Lord now for quite a while. And just, um, you know, when you experience his love, you just have such a passion for others to know him also. And um, in looking at this population that, that I feel like God so clearly led me to be a part of of helping with these women um you know knowing these things about god's character myself and knowing that um you know nothing is impossible for him and so we've just seen this we've seen some really beautiful stories of women beginning to see who this god is yeah. that really can be trusted and who has had a plan and and a dream for them, you know, for their whole lives. That's awesome. And who's able to restore, you know, he has the power to do that if they will walk with him and trust him. And so I would, I would never want to do this without, you know, the Lord being the center of everything that we do. Yeah. So that's incredible. Thank you. You have any questions? <laughs> it's amazing. Um, what you're doing and i'm like super grateful to be sitting here with you i i had a a ministry not for um but for women in recovery from substance mm -hmm. abuse exactly like what you're talking about um so i understand the the transition when did you first feel god's love like how did you know that you i have people ask me all the time how did you first know god's love and how do, how does it show up in your life mm -hmm. for me personally um, <clears throat> you know, I was 18 years old, kind of looking for life, you know, looking mm -hmm. for what was that thing. Yeah. I knew that there was kind of a, a hole in my heart, though I wouldn't have been able to articulate it mm -hmm. at that time. And, um, and just really through some, some others that kind of helped lead me to the Lord is is where i i came to know him and just baby steps you know all mm -hmm. along the way and um i think that um yeah coming from a home that was wonderful and close and um so many so many great things i'm so thankful for um but didn't really know jesus in a personal way and god seemed far away to mm -hmm. me kind of growing up and um, to really come to know him for who he is, is, is life, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
It's funny. My daughter's name is Zoe, and yeah. I found out that Zoe is Jesus' life in the Bible. Oh. Zoe means life. Mm, so I get beautiful. it. Mm-hmm. Would you like beautiful. to share some of the trials um, that you experienced and how you overcame that through God's love? Mm, through my own life? Yeah. Personally? Yeah. Wow. You know, I think, um, you know, I think there's there's many. When I think of is um, losing my mom at a fairly young age um, to a brain cancer that none of us saw coming. Mm. And she was kind of the heart of our home. She, and just this young, vivacious woman. And, um, and so within, I think it was 12 months, she was gone. Mm. And so, you know, to see that, um, you know, as hard as that was for my entire family, um, to me, I, you know, I have a, a testimony that I really did have a peace, you know, that's kind of deeper than um, just what you know and just what your reality is. Yeah. Um, that there was this rock I was standing on, and even though it seemed like chaos mm-hmm. and so much um, difficulty in my circumstances and our family circumstance, uh, there was something that couldn't be explained in any other way except that. Um, yeah, I had this piece that passes understanding, I guess, Mm -hmm. in the midst of that. That's awesome. Did you grow up in a Christian home or did you discover that, you know, through your trial or is that something that came along later in life? Yes, I would say I grew up in a home where, uh, there was a reverence for God, you know, and there was such a strong, um, value of, um, just the way you treat other people. You know, and just kind of that kindness, that caring, um, you know, close family. I had three brothers, have three brothers that I dearly love. And, you know, we, we went to church sometimes, right? So it was kind of a thing we did. And I think, I think in my understanding then, as I said, God seemed kind of far off. Yeah. Definitely not the center of, of my life at that time. And, um, and I, I think I just thought it's really just about being a good person. Yeah, that's kind of what I kind of came away from my growing up years with, and and realized that you know really that we all are sinners. You know, yeah. we all yes. even if we're good people, you know, we we fall short of the glory of God, and we need a savior. Yeah, you know. When did you discover that? Yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> you mean, know, we've had those aha moments where, you know, you just go through the motions. Like, I had a foundation of Christ, yes. but um, I'm in recovery. And so it wasn't until I went through um, overcoming alcoholism that I was mm-hmm. like, I really saw the glory of God and everything yes. started to connect. Yes. Oh, yeah. His mercy. Yes. Right? Yes. His mercy. And grace. And grace. Yes. Yes. And that's, I think, for me, kind of all those things that... Um, I had valued, you know, through my growing up years, through my high school years, you know, the president of my class and these different things that were maybe accomplishments, you know, achievements, those kinds of things. And just realizing that what I needed was, was him in my life. And I needed, I did need him to wash me. I needed that savior to wash me up from all my sin. And, um, and even just that independence from God, kind of like I've got this yeah. kind of thing. And so that was, that was the end of my senior year in high school when I first basically said, yes, you know, was it I in knew church? that he was, was it the church? answer. It was actually at a youth conference oh, okay, that cool. someone invited me to. And I'm so thankful now that they did, but this man just shared so clearly what was needed. Yeah. And I knew more than anything else that that that's what what i needed was him was jesus and so i i just said yes to him i gave my life to him at that point and didn't have a lot of bible knowledge at all you know so just kind of learned it was just a baby you're hungry you're hungry i was hungry (laughs) i still am honestly so that's awesome i don't think we ever stop being hungry (laughs) well once we get that once we get to that place yes it just flood it we want 
more. We want to get flooded and want more and more and yes. more. Yeah, that mustard seed starts to grow and want to bear fruit. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So um, I'm going to go back to your ministry. Um, how has it in- impacted, you know, your family life and mm-hmm. uh, just your life in general? Like, mm-hmm. what does the day-to-day look like? Mm-hmm. You know, I, um, I love that question because, um, you know, I feel like, I'm in a situation with with this ministry where I can't not depend on the Lord, you know, and not that I want to, right? But it's just it's these are people's lives yeah. and I just I just hold that as such a a sacred thing that I get to do this work and so I'm just very very dependent on the Lord for wisdom, for direction, for guidance, for everything for finances you know for the ministry everything that we need and we've tried to build this culture around our ministry with our team with our staff that is that way you know that uh we want to we're going to be dependent on god in in prayer we're going to pray for each other we're going to um nobody's going to we're going to leave egos at the door (laughs) because we we cannot do it without him so i think I think just kind of walking in that, it's just kind of that extra step of faith and asking him for miracles, you know, asking him to provide for us um, a ranch in Texas. Ooh. <laughs> right? Speak I mean, it. I mean, it just cannot, it can't be done. Ani- no, Anika, my, Anika speaks strength. things into existence. Yeah. She talks about that all the time. Uh, and- mm-hmm. I have heard yes, miracles of, of her story. So we're oh. speaking it into existence today yes. on our show. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we close on September 15th. Okay. And this is just just one of those examples. And so now we're going to be praying for all the things. We need furniture. Yeah. You know, We need all the things. We need people that are going to be involved and that are going to walk with these women. And, you know, um, so it's... It's just um, knowing how big God is, learning how big He is, and asking of Him. So that's that does affect my daily life, and um, seeing Him work in Illinois, seeing Him establish Catalyst Farms there, and the women that um, their lives are being transformed. Um, so I think it's affected my family in that they're they're in it yeah. with they're one hundred percent supportive. We have a daughter that's on staff with me here. Um, my husband's chairman of the board. He's very, very supportive. And, um, and I think, I think for them, they're just really with me yeah. in it and they're seeing God work. That's you know? amazing. Yeah. So I love that. So, um, let's go back to the miracles because we want to <laughs> hear the miracles. We want our listeners to hear about the miracles that are happening at Catalyst Farms and eventually Catalyst Ranches here in Texas. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. I'm sure Boy, there's many. I know. I, I just have to, you know, think, I think, you know, it's, it's sort of the things that seem like small things like, you know, our Christmas tree for the house at Catalyst Farms you know, broke and we, you know, we wanted a beautiful Christmas for the women. So, you know, praying about that and just, um, you know, that I think it was within a day someone had provided this, this wonderful, you know, Christmas tree for us. And, um, it's, you know, I think it's, it's, so that seems like a small thing, but it's that he cares, you know, he hears us and, um, You know, when we see that there's a transition for, you know, a staff member or a key volunteer, and we're just praying into that, and which has just happened recently, and then how the Lord was preparing and calling this other woman to to come in and step in and um, almost seamless, you know, and we can see that that's a that's a miracle the way He does that, and. and I, I think that's one of the miracles is the miracle of the people that he's brought in to be involved and to, um, you know, that each have their own story mm-hmm. of how God led them to be involved and how he prepared them and that kind of thing. And it it's just what we needed yeah. at that time. And so um, I think if I have had more time, I could come up with a pretty long list. But really, it's just 
is just knowing that he's our source, going to him and seeing how he, how he provides, you know? I have a question. Sure. Like I, I, like everything that you're talking about when it comes to everybody that comes to you is literally God sent, right? Yep. Because we want, not only do we want the, the program to be amazing, but we want the people that are working because that's, that is the yes. program, right? That yes. is your ministry is the people right. that are working one-on-one -on -one with these women. Yes. What are some yes. miracles that come to mind when we're actually speaking of the women that are getting mm -hmm. help, like children being mm -hmm. brought back into their lives, mm -hmm. rescued, you know, yes. what are some miracles that you've mm -hmm. seen during the ministry? Mm. Oh boy. So this is, you're just thrilling me. This is something I love talking about really. Um, so there's a, a gal whose name is Amanda who mm -hmm. came into the pro the program during COVID, right at the beginning of COVID. And at that time, uh, she was homeless. She was living in abandoned buildings. She was addicted. She was, um, her daughter had been taken away from her because she wasn't able to parent her, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. And she was, um, yeah, she was just a hopeless person, a broken person. Um, all of her friends were addicts. And she, uh, through someone that, that knew her kind of from the streets who had um, contacted us about, about Amanda, she ended up getting on this plane and coming to what she she didn't know what she was coming to you know she knew it was called catalyst farms so she thought she's going to be just in the middle of this cornfield <laughs> yeah right she's coming from boston you know and um she came and she um she t you know she would tell you that uh, her life has been completely transformed hmm. so in the last several years you know she has She's sober. All right. You know, she's found Jesus Christ. So she's she's got a heart that's full. She's being healed. Um, she graduated from the program. She has a job that's kind of her dream job that she's being supported by. Hmm. She's married. She's met this man that's that's a huge blessing to her. <clears throat> she's bought a house. Wow. You know, and she's on her way to getting her daughter back, which yes. is a not easy process, but it's getting there. You yes. Know? And the other thing that thrills me is that she's all, she's involved with Catalyst Farms. So Absolutely. she's come back she's and is, yeah. is helping those women and is involved and in speaking into their lives in a way that some of us can't. Absolutely. You, can. you know? Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'd say that's a miracle story for sure. It's a life, you know? Absolutely. So yeah. really quick. So now that you've seen the miracle through here, her, and you were speaking of the struggles, it's perfect lead into like going through the struggles, going through the different things, even, I mean, and we haven't really talked about too many struggles, but there, for me, there was a lot of struggles depending on the Lord for a yeah. company to some days we were scared of paychecks coming. Like, where mm -hmm. are we going to be able to pay some days? Yeah. I mean, it was always, you know, depending on God takes a lot of faith, yeah. yes. but then hearing the story of Amanda, you see Amanda's face and it's like, okay, I can breathe again. That would be yes. my sign from God that keep going, yes. keep pushing. So yeah. do you find yes. that to be your, um reason some days yes absolutely or most days absolutely and you know um i was writing about this this summer we do an update that comes out every month i read it our website mm -hmm. did you mm -hmm. your blog mm -hmm. oh yeah oh, thank you she studied i did i wanted to know <laughs> this is important it is important mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh i love that you know so i was just sharing about um the amandas that are still out there Yep. You know, the Amandas that are new in our program that, you know, that are just kind of at the beginning stages, they're not on the other side of, you know, that sobriety kind of thing mm -hmm. yet. They're still struggling so much. And, um, you know, it does it, you know, it gives, um, gives hope, it gives encouragement. And it, I think it speaks to the fact that, you know, Jesus can, can change a life. Absolutely. You know, yeah. 
and but he wants he wants to use his people. Yeah, absolutely. right. He works <clears throat> through us, and we want to do that as as excellently as we can. Yes, because um, you know we we know it matters so much. It does. You know, it matters for the Amandas. It matters for Amanda's daughter yes. who's longing to live with her mom again. You know all these things, and so we want to be good stewards of you know what we've been entrusted with and so that's yeah it yeah. just it just fuels the fire yeah. i have so many questions I'm, and so cuz i'm a founder <laughs> i'm a founder of a nonprofit that i ran for 11 years so i am like oh, i have yeah. so many questions and so many things to like i can feel it and i love that the yeah. most important part is the woman amanda is the one who is really going to touch the women you obviously, yes. God used you. And one of the things that I learned during my ministry, during my nonprofit time, was that I wasn't the smartest person in the room mm -hmm. and that I was called for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And my purpose was to allow other people to do their part yes. in God's work, yes. right? And not try to have yeah. my hand over all of it. I had, an, I had yes. a vision one day because I felt like I just wanted to have my hands mm -hmm. and God like showed me this seed that I had planted uh -huh. Right. And I was standing over the seed and the sun couldn't get to the seed because mm. I'm standing over it. Wow. So I saw that and he's like, you've got to step back and yes. let that seed that you planted grow, mm, you good. know? And that's so good. Yeah. Amanda, some, a woman going through trafficking or homeless are mm -hmm. like, they need, when they're talking, you're amazing and you've mm -hmm. brought this to life, Yeah, but they need someone who's for me in recovery. I needed someone yeah. who had been through recovery in the hard times Absolutely. because that's what I needed to, I needed to relate. <clears> and that's how Jesus shows up through us i think is believe like bringing people together yes. like you said yeah to keep the organization going and thriving and yes. really helping oh, love that. the women so love oh yeah that. i could go on oh yeah and yeah. then you were talking about the body of christ and the mm -hmm. gifts that exactly. god gives us uniquely yes right and we want to use those gifts to his glory and to build up the body and um but but yeah freeing people and inviting them Yes. In to use their gifts and to speak in and um, knowing each person's role is just as valuable. It's whether very... they're cleaning the office or they're meeting with the women in groups or whatever it is. It's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah. So <clears throat> we have staff and volunteers who have a background besides Amanda who have this background themselves. I love it. And it's um, wonderful. That's they so amazing. They teach us, they speak into things and in really important ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're being used. It's beautiful to watch. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so blessed to get to know you better, both of you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so through this ministry, what advice do you have to our listeners or maybe um, listeners that might have, you know, family members or friends or come across anybody who might be suffering with human tra trafficking and God's love in general? Mm -hmm. um, what advice do you have in, mm -hmm. you know, what God's love has um, done for you, has done mm. for your women. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what advice do you have for walking, walking in Christ? Oh yeah, thank you. That's a great question. You know, I think uh, there's so many things. I think one thing is that, um, you know, just living in this world and sometimes living in a, in a situation family-wise, kind of growing up in some things, you can, you can end up with some lies in your head, right? Yeah. Right. And so you want to, um, as much as possible, be surrounding yourself with with more truth and replacing those lies with truth. And, you know, just about the goodness of God's character, Yeah, you know, and um, and I think in being around his people in the church, you know, that's going to be a support in that it should be. Yeah. And um, and just getting into the Bible you know, yourself, getting to know him, yeah. you know, thinking of it as a relationship and just, just like with a good girlfriend, you get closer, the more you spend time with her and, um, you get to know her better. Yeah. And also you understand, you get to know her voice and kind of her heart a little bit more. And it's the same with the Lord. I think just making a priority to sit down, you know, in the morning with his word open and just read it, learn about him you know, get to know him. Yeah. 
you know? Absolutely. You know, everybody needs a purpose in this world. And um, for Anika and I to stay sober every day, we have to serve others. And that's yeah. something that we learn later in life, you know? And yeah. That's how our world is. It's all about yeah. the external stuff, but that is not the stuff that makes you happy. That's not right. the stuff that keeps you sober. It's the yeah. serving others. It's having a purpose. Um, it's pouring into people mm. um, and, you know, it's showing God's love. Mm. So Amen. to our listeners out there um, and anybody who needs help, how do they get a hold of you? Mm-hmm. You know, our, our website is catalystministries.net. And you can find pretty much anything that you need there. We have on our, our website, um, there's a location page where you can, you can click, find out more about Illinois, find out more about Texas, find out how to you know, get involved, how to volunteer with us. There's a give page where you can, you can give, which is a huge help to us. Um, you know, we have monthly prayer coffees, those kinds of things where you can come and pray with us and um, you can get training you know, to, to be a volunteer or to get involved. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's the easiest thing. You know, you can reach me that way too. Uh, so catalystministries.net is really probably the easiest way to kind of take a next step. Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share with the listeners before we go and wrap up? Yeah, I think, I think just maybe a thing to consider as we're thinking about maybe ways for others to engage. You know, I shared with you, we, we have this house, right? By the grace of God. And um, what we wanna do is give people an opportunity to be involved with um, with helping make that into a, a beautiful home mm -hmm. because we want this to be a place that speaks to the women of their worth. And so we're, we have this uh, new initiative that's called Adopt a Room or Adopt an Area. So we're going to be establishing beautiful gardens, beautiful living room, beautiful bedrooms, you know, um, all kinds of things. And so we need groups, families, you know, small groups, churches to kind of say, hey, I want to adopt a room. And, you know, so that's another way that you can um, be involved and kind of get your, your hands into it in terms of helping prepare this beautiful space for the women that are going to be coming. That's incredible. Um, yes. Anything that we can do here on the show to help you, please let us know. Absolutely. Anika, do you have any last words to take us out? I think this was a beautiful, you know, with the word that we got, the truth. And the truth is God's love. You know, the truth, you know, when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And I think knowing God's love, that's what they're getting at this, at Catalyst Ministries, Catalyst Farms right now and at Catalyst Ranch when it comes here is God's love. And that is where the freedom is coming from. And so I just want to thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for mm -hmm. being obedient. Mm -hmm. I remember a long time ago hearing in a, in a um, sermon, you know, your obedience or uh, people's lives are dependent, depending on your obedience, you know? And I was like, Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> so I just want to thank you and commend you for what you're doing. And i um, glad that we met and oh. we'll be happy to, I am, I have a lot to talk to you about after this show. <laughs> Me too. Yes. <laughs> With you as well. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Words. Thank you so much for being yes. on the show Aww. today. Thank, thank you guys Sarah. all for listening today. And if you need additional information, please see us at frombeertothebible.com. Thank you for tuning in to this week's From Beer to the Bible. Make sure to tune in next week when Irvin and Sarah gift you with even more addiction recovery information. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember, we're always there for you.